That's pretty cool. Glad to see you all logged in today to learn about dendrochronology. Oh, this is going to be too easy. I'm basically only doing this video so I can show you my wood. Was this not the kind of wood you were expecting? Get your mind out of the gutter. This is from Hamburg and it's about a thousand years old or so from an archeological site right by the harbor. How cool is that? Yeah, it's super cool. In a nutshell, dendrochronology is a fancy word for tree ring dating. This branch of absolute dating was used as one of the most reliable methods before radioactive dating came into effect after World War II and is still popular today. Ha! Popular. Absolute dating means that we can pretty much get a proper date or chronology for a site slash artifact. Yay, science! Yes. Of course, with all absolute dating methods, it relies on a regular repetitive process. Our seasons, for example. It's summer here in the Netherlands and I love it. Oh, the sun is shining and I'm inside filming for you. You're welcome. We humans have devised a super cool way of timing the Earth's rotation around the sun. And in this cycle, we get seasons, which cause changes in the climate, which in turn impact the environment and create changes in the trees that we can actually measure. As a tree grows, it not only gets taller, but it grows layers outward, getting fatter every year. <gasps> getting fat, you birch. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. There's only more of you to love. Ugh. But the characteristics of the ring that's formed depends on the climate and seasonal changes of that year. Dendrochronology first came about in the American Southwest in the early 20th century. It then spread to Europe and is now rooted in the archaeological dating practices, both as a standalone as well as a way to calibrate and confirm radiocarbon dating. When a tree is felled, you expose a cross section and are able to see all the growth rings we talked about earlier. And just like humans, trees don't grow at a constant rate, so all of these rings are spaced out at varying thicknesses. This is because the climate causes fluctuations in growth, and as a tree gets older, it doesn't grow as rapidly, so the rings get narrower over time. If it's really good weather one year, the ring will be thicker than if there's a particularly bad cold spell the next. Dendrochronologists measure these rings and plot them to make a diagram of their thicknesses. If you take a bunch of the same species of tree from areas close by, they'll generally show you the same patterns of growth, and from there you can start to make your chronology. If you, cut, for example, cut down a tree this year that was only 75 years old, you then have 75 years of history there. Now cut down a tree that was 200 years old, and you can match the rings from the younger tree and see the rest of the timeline going back the extra 125 years. And from there we can take the artifacts and line them up and go further and further and further back until the beginning of time! Or at least until the end of the known recorded era. This is a technique called cross-dating. It ensures that each individual tree ring is assigned to its exact year of its formation. You can't believe how accurate it is. The only issue with dendrochronology is that it doesn't work on all trees. Places like tropical regions where the weather doesn't fluctuate as much can't develop systematic tree rings. Sometimes there aren't any at all. So we only have sequences. Uh, sequences for specific areas. Nevertheless, it's an important tool for the areas that we do have it for. And this is how you can use it for dating archaeological sites and finds. If there's a piece of wooden furniture found, once you identify this tree species, you can go into the sequence and figure out when the wood to make the object was cut down. Again, as with all objects and sites, it doesn't always give you the exact date of its creation, uh, both the site or the object itself, because things are used for longer periods of time before they're discarded or buried. It just means that it can't be older than this moment. The same thing goes for coins and other well-dated objects. But it does give us a really good foundation to go off of. Another small issue you might run into is if the piece of wood in question is missing its sapwood, the outermost layer of the tree when it was cut down. If that's gone, your data is going to be way off. And like I said earlier, it's also used to help calibrate radiocarbon dating, but we'll get to that in a more sciencey video. That's it! the trunk-aided version of dendrochronology. If you love wood and really want to get into it, there's a whole journal dedicated to it called Dendrochronologia. Super nerdy, but very, very interesting. As always, for a brief write-up and extra resources, including the link to that amazing journal, click the link in my description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay nerdy, my friends.